So understanding your role in creating a safe and clean environment that fosters your residents' independence, contentment, which means their happiness, and their self-esteem. So surroundings that are pleasant and contain your personal possessions or items add to your comfort and your sense of well-being. It's your job as a nurse aide or a nurse aide student to make sure that that uh, area is clean and safe and to create an environment that fosters the independence, happiness, and self-esteem of our residents. So in this unit we're going to talk about environmental control, the residents room, cleaning the unit, and bed making. So when we talk about environmental control we're referring to temperature and if you think about it older people or smaller people are oftentimes very chilly. Sweaters, lap, robes, and shawls provide warmth. Drapes, shades, and screens are used to block drafts, and a lot of times when someone's cold, we use extra blankets. The time that we need to be careful of that is if someone has a temperature that's elevated. So when we prevent odors, we talk about um, ventilation, so we need to make sure that there's good ventilation to help prevent odors. Waste should be removed and discarded as soon as possible, and we want to make sure that we use good hygiene practices. Residents can be easily disturbed by unfamiliar noises. Staff should avoid loud laughter and talking. We're going to also think about lighting and adjust the lighting to meet the needs of the resident. Use shades and drapes to control bright and natural light. Provide adequate light for reading and control glare and shadowed areas if possible. When we think about the floor maintenance, we want to make sure that things are clean. So we want to be clean but we don't want things to be slippery. We want to be clear of clutter and spills. Typically there are no throw rugs in our residence rooms and the rooms and the floors are in good repair. When we think about maintaining cleanliness, we want to remove meal trays and dishes immediately after use. Remove crumbs and clean eating areas after use, which means wipe down the counters. Remove dirt and dust and that can be controlled by housekeeping, but we can also ensure that there's no dirt and dust left laying around. Waste containers need to be emptied promptly. So let's talk about pests. Yuck! The dreaded cockroach. So remove open food that's left in the unit that can attract ants and roaches. This is also a great environment for microorganisms. Family and visitors should consult with a charge nurse before bringing in food for residents. Make sure that there's proper disposal of any food and waste materials. So faulty equipment and unsafe conditions, if there's something that's spilled, clean it up. Frayed electrical cords, unplug it and remove it. Defective outlets, we need to report that immediately and don't use it. When equipment malfunctions, remove it, mark it out of service and don't use it. If you see broken glass, we need to make sure we clean that up. Beds or wheelchairs that won't lock, we need to take those out of service and let somebody know. If there's a faulty toilet that won't flush or it's stuffed up, we need to report that. We also need to report leaks in bathrooms or rooms. If there's water on the floor, we need to clean it up. If there's burned out light bulbs, we need to report that. Faulty call bells, we need to be reported and replaced immediately. Furniture that's defective needs to be removed from the room, if possible, and report it. So if we have structure problems, we need to alert the resident to the danger and report it to a supervisor. That can be things like loose floor tiles, frayed loose carpet, loose fixtures, and handrails. Structure problems, we need to alert the resident to the danger, of course, and we need to make sure that one of those things could be doors that are st that stick and they don't latch properly or damaged paint or wallpaper. So let's talk about the resident's exact room. So you need to be aware that each facility has different equipment and different room setups. Safety features in the resident's room, furniture and equipment is of paramount importance. Beds. Beds can be electric or manually controlled. They can have side rails if they're used. All beds should have side rails that function. Positions can be that are other than flat can be semi Fowlers, Fowlers, Trendelenburg, and you can also have wheels that lock on the beds. All wheels should lock. An over the bed table adjusts to various heights. It's used for eating, writing, and other activities. Oftentimes it contains storage area for, person, for the resident's grooming articles such as a hairbrush. And it also can be used by the nursing team as a workspace.
The bedside stand is a storage area for personal belongings and personal care items of the resident. The drawer is typically on the top with a cabinet with a shelf below the drawer. Usually in the bedside stand you'll find a urinal, bed pan and covers, wash basin, emesis basin for vomit, soap dish and soap, a bath blanket, toilet paper, and personal hygiene items. The bedside stand at the top is used for other things such as a telephone, tissues, flowers, cards, and other items that the resident desires. Chairs can have upholstery, they can be straight backed with no arms, or they can have arms. The privacy curtain in the room is exactly that, provides privacy. The cubicle curtain between beds and semi-private rooms which looks like this, and privacy is always provided when we give care. So personal care items, the call bell. The call bell is used to request assistance. It can be a bell, a light, or an intercom system, or all three. It's placed within reach of the resident at all times. Bathrooms also contain call signals, handrails, and towel racks. On the towel rack, you can use the washcloth. You can put the washcloth or the towel. And never, ever, ever let the resident pull up on a towel rack. They have to use the handrails. Other things in their room may be a television, a telephone, a waste basket, a reading lamp, and storage space. So when you go on to the unit, the nursing unit, don't rearrange items without permission. If you're in the resident's room, respect their private space knock on doors before entering rooms, and speak prior to opening a drawn curtain. Close the curtains to provide privacy when you're doing a procedure such as giving a bath, starting to ambulate, changing a patient. Assure personal items are convenient to promote independence and safety, so if your resident loves to brush their hair, they may want their hair brushed close by. Accommodate physical problems by locating equipment on the unaffected side. So if your resident has had a stroke and they have left-sided weakness and they want their hairbrush, the smart thing would be to put their hairbrush on the right side. Store clothing and personal belongings in closets and chests of drawers as directed by the resident. So if something is concurrently cleaned, that means it happens every day, it's also called scheduled or routine cleaning. Care of bed linens. So changed completely on bath days, usually once or twice weekly or according to facility policy. Pillowcases may be changed more frequently. Soiled linens should be replaced immediately. The top sheet can be used to replace the bottom sheet or the fitted sheet. Soiled linen is folded inward. Do not shake linen. Soiled linen is held away from your clothing, the caregiver the caregiver's clothing, and soiled linen is placed in a covered linen hamper and removed after it's removed from the bed. So the types of linen vary according to the, to the facility. Sometimes there's plastic, rubber, and cotton draw sheets that are required if the mattress uh, is, may not be required if the mattress is moisture proof. Most people do put a draw sheet. Most facilities use fitted bottom sheets and draw sheets are used as lifters when moving the resident. So when you make a bed, always use good body mechanics, follow medical asepsis, and wash your hands prior to handling clean linen and after handling soiled or dirty linen. Take enough linen into the resident's room and never shake it to prevent the spread of microorganisms. Excess linen in the room is considered contaminated and cannot be used for other residents. So take just enough that you need into your resident's room. Plastic draw sheets should never touch the resident's skin. Tighten loose linens as necessary because a lot of people don't like tight bed sheets on their feet. Save time and energy by making one side of the bed prior to going to the other side. Leave unused clean linen in the resident's room. So a closed bed is made after terminal cleaning of the unit and it remains closed until a new admission and then it's converted to an open bed. An open bed is an unoccupied bed. The linens are folded back, as you can see, so that the resident can get into the bed with ease and then pull the linen up. It's made when the resident will be out of the bed for a short time. 
how do you make an occupied bed? So it's made with a resident in the bed. You have to make sure you keep good body alignment. Be aware of any restrictions in movement due to linen or that may be in the way of the bed. Explain the procedure and ensure safety. Please make sure you tell your residents that if you turn them that they're not going to fall. So we loosen the top of the bedding at the foot of the bed for a dependent resident to reduce pressure on the toes. And that concludes. How do we take care of a clean, make a clean, safe environment for our residents?